Rolling, rolling, roll. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Oh, my parents just started doing some weird stuff there. Hold on a second. I got like this big thing going on there. Holy crap. Earth. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> How the heck are you? It's been a long day. Um, had my bottle opener here, and I don't know where it went. Hey, I'm Tom the Beer Whisperer, as you know. <laughs> Uh, so let's get right to it. Huh? This is a Bozen uh, chocolate stout. Um, this is one of those brews found only at Trader Joe's. So let me pour in a glass and we'll have a convo about it. This is my nice boulevard glass. You like that? They sold that around the holidays last year. Came in a pack with uh, some boulevard uh, high gravity brews. Anyway, uh, let me give you the particulars. Can't even read it actually. <laughs> well, so we go. <laughs> My label got ripped. I think it says five four. Sixty six IBUs. Thought it was a higher ABB than that, but uh, well, there you go. There it is. Uh, let me show you the label. My label got ripped there, but I guess it looks like a 5.4 here. Oh. Hey, let me show you a picture. Nice picture, though. Uh, this is uh, brewed by, according to them, a Rhinelander, which is uh, amongst the further... <laughs> uh, uh, research, it turns out to be uh, Rhinelander is actually Minhas, which we know Minhas brews a lot of beers for Trader Joe's. So, anyway, so let me see if I can find out some more uh, information on the chocolate stout since I thought I could read it, but I can't here. So, let me just kind of wing this sucker. Oh, yeah, sir. Don't you love it when I do a professional show where they have everything all together all at once? Me too. No, it is 5.4. I was thinking it was a heavier beer than that. It isn't. It's only 5.4. Chuck was down. Uh, so, uh, a very, uh, uh, you know, a beer like this, you might expect to be a little bigger because I did. I thought it would be at least 6.5, if not 7.5. But it's only a 5.4. Uh, Chuck was down. Um, it does have the notes that you expect from a brew like this. Um, hi there. <laughs> I had a long, it's been a long day. Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I did the Ozark Growler meeting earlier today, so I hadn't. Uh, it's uh, after 8. I did that from uh, 2 to 4. I uh, had a Henry's about, uh, what, about six, so it's been a couple hours since I've had anything since then, so. Oh, yowzers. Uh, I got like a house of cards going on over there. I moved one thing over there with top one on me. But anyway, let me pour some here for you. Let you get a good look at her. Uh, a, a decent head, right? Look at that. This is, uh, again, yeah, th these are uh, the Bozen beers. They have the Heavy Lift Vessel, that IPA. Got an Imperial IPA or a double IPA, I can't remember what they call it. I wasn't crazy about the double IPA, I had that a while back. Again, uh, you know, I, I I stress price and value a lot when I do my thing here. Uh, this is a buck ninety nine, so it's two dollars. So I want you to think about that for a second. You got twenty two ounces. Um, 
for two bucks. So uh, if we buy three of them, we're talking about 66 ounces, just shy of a six pack for only six bucks. That's reasonable. If you want to get to over that six uh, over that six pack range, you need four of them. So now we're talking about 88 ounces, which is more than a six pack. For only eight dollars, and again, we're talking about decent craft brew. That's pretty reasonable. Is this one of the great upper echelon brews? Absolutely not. Uh, but is it worth tw uh, two bucks for twenty-two ounces? Absolutely. Um, for a lot of reasons, um, it does give you some flavor. Is it one of my favorite chocolate stouts? Will it make the top ten of chocolate stouts that the beer wash has ever had? No, probably not. Uh, but it is tasty. <laughs> and now it does have the notes, though. There are some good notes. There are some positive about it. So, you know, again, it just comes down to what you're looking for at that particular moment. It is a solid brew. Uh, it, it, as most brews you're going to find at Trader Joe's are. Um, there's probably nothing you buy there is ever going to knock your socks off or make your top ten. It is going to be worth what you had to pay for it, though. And that really is what is important, is it not? I think uh, the problem, you know, a lot of craft beer nerds make is they like to make the assumption that price is no object. And I think a lot of folks do that. So, oh, well, yeah, maybe it's 40 bucks a bottle, but it's worth it. <laughs> maybe it's 20, maybe it's 15 to 6 pack, but, and that may very well be, it may be worth it, but the average beer drinker may not be able to afford that. So, and, and although the most craft beer geeks will, will certainly poo-poo these Trader Joe's brews, the truth is I bet a lot of them are drinking them when, when they don't have those, those big dollars. <laughs> And I know there's a lot of craft brew drinkers that are like me, that like the better beers, that like these nice good beers, uh, but don't all, always have the money to, to to afford, you know, the, the $10, $15 six-pack beer. So you have to improvise. And this is a, a nice improvisation. This is a good beer for only two bucks. It does have some nice flavors, though. Chocolate stat, uh, you, you do get some chocolate malt. There is some big roasted malt flavors. And it is certainly one, if you can put your pretension hat down, uh, you know, you could sit down and relax and certainly enjoy it, you know. <laughs> oh, yowzer. Oh. Uh, I had some good ones there at that growler's meeting, though, man. Uh, uh, the three Floyds that were brought by Gene were just phenomenal, and I will probably try to do those tomorrow if we get a chance. If not, I'll do them later in the week. Uh, I probably won't get a chance to do any brew reviews next weekend, but I'll try to do those two uh, tomorrow or Monday or Tuesday, if nothing else. Uh, we do those growler meetings at a place called the Twilight Grill. Uh, the chef owner, his name is Keith, uh, and he always lets you uh, sample the tap while you're there. And I should have looked this up before I started, but again, I was a little, uh, you know, anyways. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, he, he had a mother's brew on tap that I hadn't had a chance to try yet called Holy Mole. And I actually don't even see it on their website to give you the information on it. It is phenomenal, man. Uh, so I'll have to find out exactly what went in that bad boy because it was just a hello, you know, like mole type spice up the end. I think it's a three blind mice with little moles, but but I don't know. I could be wrong, so I'm going to find out for sure and I'll let you know later. Uh, it was good though. He also had a a collaboration with uh, uh, da, 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 New Belgium. And Alpine Brewing uh, called us. Uh, I think it was Super India Pale Ale. That was just wildly good. And I'm a guy that's not a fan of New Belgium because all their stuff seems to have this 
taste to me that I just don't dig. But this beer was just great. Uh, he would, he, uh, he was pouring out of pitchers for us because he was trying to finish it up. He knew he only had about two or three pitchers left in his keg, and he had a, 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 a keg of a, a Founders Kentucky breakfast that he wants to put on tap, so he's trying to get us to kill it. But there wasn't enough people there. You know, there was the three of us. And as much as I wanted to try that Kentucky breakfast at a tap, I couldn't slam that. <laughs> I couldn't slam that IPA enough, but it was, it was tasty, man. I tell you what. If there are any Ozarkians watching me, you really need to be at that meeting on the 4th because there's no telling what you're going to find there. I mean, I'm going to bring what I can bring, um, and that might not be any great shakes. I bring the best possible, but... You know, it might not be anything different than you can get, but Gene has availability to get stuff that I can't get. And uh, Keith always lets you sample what he has on tap. And he always does something from his kitchen that's phenomenal. Today he, he brought out these sandwiches that are made of, he, he did these uh, pork belly, oh, excuse me, he did these seared pork belly sandwiches that had a cucumber and some sweet chili mayo on them. And they were just wicked good, I'm telling you what. Oh. I mean, I don't, you know, uh, you know, as far as who's the best chef in Springfield is up for debate, but uh, he's arguably uh, one of the best without a doubt. So, you know, I know there are a lot of folks that can get this that are close enough to get to these growler meetings, uh, and, and you should. If you do like some good beer, there, you certainly should get there. So, I'm going to finish up this brew. So, yeah. It's got a nice color. I'm going to tell you what I'm tasting. Without getting all bear geek on you. Um, the aromas are chocolate, coffee, what you expect from a beer like this. And and those are the tastes as well. You get chocolate and coffee, some black barley. I can tell it's in there. Oh, wicked. Uh, it's actually surprisingly good. And I tell you what, if some of you folks put your pretension hats aside or were to blind taste this, you, you probably wouldn't even realize it was a Trader Joe's beer for two bucks. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, I love those growler meetings. So the only problem is that when they do them during the middle of the day like that from 2 to 4, I am rendered useless the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, the family wants me to come home and cook, and I am, I'm, you know, it's over for me, right? After two hours of good beer drinking, it's over, baby. I am rendered useless. Uh, the good news is generally they're on Sundays, so, you know, uh, you have to be back functioning on Monday. So the good news is this time it was on a Saturday, so I've got tomorrow to recover. Oh, holy crap, in a basket. So I'm going to finish this last swallow, and we'll get on with our day. Bozen. Bozen chocolate stuff. Uh, from Rhinelander, which is actually Minhas. <laughs> it's kind of a confusing little thing, but, but there you go. You look up Rhinelander, you'll find a website. And it shows they have uh, coming craft beers. Let's say they're available, but but they've been coming for over a year now. <laughs> you know, so I don't know if they're ever going to be available. Maybe they're available now. Maybe they're not. But anyway, <laughs> but but the further research I found out that it's actually Minhas. So, anyways, there you go. Hey, I'm gonna get out of here. This is Tony Beer Whisperer. I love you. <laughs>